Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the first Immortal Chess game in the history. It took place in 1851 during the International Chess Tournament organized by Howard Staunton in London. However, it was not the official game of the tournament, uh, it was played during the break as an offhand game. And the game was nicknamed the Immortal Game uh, in 1855, that means four years later, by the Austrian chess master and journalist Ernst Falkber. And why the tournament was organized, this is interesting. There was a huge dispute who is the best player in the world at that time. Uh, so Staunton wanted to figure it out and then he organized that tournament. He sent the invitations to most of the strong players or maybe all of the strongest players in the world. But some of them couldn't come. So for example, Baron von der Lassa uh, from Berlin Chess Club uh, didn't come. Alexander Petrov from Russia didn't come as well. Daniel Harvitz had some issues with the London Chess Club, so he didn't play as well. But the tournament was still uh, very successful and interesting that it was organized as a single elimination matches uh, of 16 players. So the eight losers in the first round were dropped from the tournament. Uh, and so pretty harsh and there was no seeding system of the type commonly used in tennis tournaments. So some strong players play uh, against each other in the first round and some lower rated players uh, also played. Uh, so pretty funny situation, but three of the stronger players, Kiseritsky, Bert and Leventhal, lost in the first round and they were eliminated. Uh, and the tournament was won by Adolf Andersen. Now, Adolf Andersen was a German chess master and when he won 1851 and 1852, because one year later there was another uh, tournament, and so he proved that he is the strongest player in the world. And later he was uh, challenged for the World Championship Games and he won these challenges. So we can say that he was the first unofficial world chess champion. Now, um, Adolf Andersen, 32 years old German master, uh, he play as white and his uh, ranking according to chess metrics and Edo historical chess ratings and they are quite different in this case. So I make the average ranking 2580. Uh, and his opponent, Lionel Kiseritsky, he was born in the Russian Empire in German family and he studied and worked as a mathematics teacher. Then he moved to Paris and in Paris he became a chess professional. So he was giving the lessons uh, of playing chess or played the chess games for five francs an hour. That's interesting fact, what we know. And he also edited the chess magazine. Uh, Lionel Kiseritsky was 45 years old and sadly in two years he gonna die because of the stroke and um, his ranking 2597 it's also average um, from the Edo historical chess ratings and uh, chessmetrics.com and he play as black so without further ado let's jump into the game white opens with e4 we have e5 f4 e takes on f4 king's gambit accepted the most romantic openings uh, very popular, uh, especially in 19th century. And here knight f3 would be the most popular, but we have bishop on c4, inviting black to play um, queen on h4 with check. Lionel Kiseritsky played that and we have king on f1. And about this position, uh, Magnus Carlsen sometimes have it in blitzes and he said it's illogical, but white have very solid position here. The position of king is, is very safe and also white can construct very strong attack. Uh, we have b5, this is Brian counterattack, and sometimes it's called uh, Kiseritsky counterattack because it was deeply analyzed by uh, Lionel Kiseritsky. And now interesting uh, story from 1993. So it's almost uh, 150 years later. Uh, Nigel Short and Gary Kasparov played also in London the match for the world champion title and uh, Gary Kasparov was winning but organizer asked them to set up this position this exact position with b5 
and ask them if they would like to play the game, 20 minutes game, uh, offhand game as well. So that would be very, very, you know, a uh, big honor to the tradition that it was played. This was the immortal game if they want to play. And Gary Kasparov said, okay, I, I can play that. However, I don't really see the plan for black what to play, but he accepted. And both of the games, of course, were played bishop on b Five. That was the idea of this counter gambit. Now the bishop is not on this diagonal, uh, so white has less chances for attack. And also c6, d5 is coming soon. Uh, we have knight on f6 first, knight f3 attacking the queen, queen h6, and here Nigel short play, knight on c3, and after g5, believe me or not, Nigel Short won in 15 moves, so just eight more moves and, you know, world champion uh, resigned the game and Nigel Short won uh, in King's um, Gambit, uh, accepted. That's interesting story. But here Adolf Andersen play D3. We have Knight on H5 with plan of attacking the King and the Rook. Uh, and here Rook on G1 would be okay. However, uh, Andersen play interesting move Knight on H4. Uh, and now, of course, uh, knight on g3 is uh, impossible to play because white simply can just pick up the, the knight. So we have a uh, queen on g5. Queen on g5 actually support um, uh, d5. Uh, so now c6 and d5 would be possible. But we have knight on f5, uh, putting this knight on the very active outpost and also uh, blocking the queen from supporting um, d5. Uh, we have c6 anyway, and now um, bishop on a4 is possible, of course, but uh, Adolf Andersen played g4, attacking the knight. And now black, of course, can play like g6, and this is the strongest move, and that would be pretty crazy, because knight is under attack, bishop is under attack, and also this knight is under attack, so that would be pretty crazy position. A lot of calculation would be um, needed, but here we have knight on f6, so uh, Kiserit just retreat with the knight to the more active square but there is some problem with that now we have rook on g1 very strong move supporting g4 uh, because actually g4 was attacked twice uh, but now h4 is coming this is a very very dangerous move so probably h5 should be played but black just take the bishop on b5 and now we have h4 as planned and after queen on g6 look at this queen the queen is almost trapped now we have h5 queen g5 and now queen on f3 and what is the threat here this is the threat now the queen can be trapped what to play now this is the problem Knight on g8 was played by Kiseritsky, of course, uh, making a space for the queen. Uh, but feel free to pause the video and find the much better continuation for black. And it's in very nice, romantic, 19th century style, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So... The continuation we are looking for is bishop on b7 and after bishop on f4 you have to find knight on g4 bank and this looks like a suicide but actually it makes some sense and it's the strongest continuation for black uh, after rook on g4 actually black is winning because queen can takes on f5 um, and then after exchanging the queens uh, black stands better with one minor piece extra is of course winning uh, so after knight on g4 uh, bishop would have to take on g5 and then black has this fork very interesting uh, and then king f2 and after picking up the queen white stands slightly better but it's still playable for uh, for black before you know, blocking the, the knight from developing and the game could continue. Um, and the best continuation for white would be queen on g4. And after exchanging the queens, um, maybe g6 uh, and the game would continue. But it would still much better than playing knight on g8. And now uh, bishop takes on f4, queen f6. 
knight c3 and look at this black didn't develop any piece except the queen and white al already have developed uh, three minor pieces uh, and the queen and bishop on c5 so developing the the bishop with tempo on the rook the problem is white actually could play d4 anderson didn't play that but watch what what would happen if d4 is played now uh, black has to move the bishop and then e5 is coming with attack on the rook but also bishop on e5 with attack on the queen and on g7 this is coming and also a knight can come on d5 with attack on the queen but also the threat is to jump on c7 with attack on the king and the rook that would be you know devastating for black however um anderson here he just play knight on d5 attacking the queen which is also a very strong move because this knight attacks the queen but also threats you know this fork uh, so black has to do something if queen goes on c6 this knight can jump on g7 with check this is also very dangerous so what to do black started to counterattack. so queen on b2 with attack on the rook and now the best what white can do is rook on d1 rook on e1 uh, and continuing the attack but anderson wanted to create immortal game so he said hold my beer bishop e6 what do you do now uh, and now what's the idea black actually controlled this very important diagonal and now they don't control anymore if they take this bishop actually is forced checkmate and nothing can be done about that this is just a forced checkmate four moves uh, so it's impossible to take this bishop so what else can be played queen on a1 actually it's the best move in this position and i will tell you about that move later uh, but the idea is after king on e2 the queen would be under attack so uh, this is why kiseritsky didn't go for that he preferred bishop on g1 first and then queen on a1 that makes more sense however now white can play e5 very powerful move and the main idea is to you know cut the queen from protecting g7 the cost of that operation another rook so we have queen on a1 with check king on e2 so what's the threat knight on g7 with check and after king's move to d8 checkmate on c7 so black play knight on a6 preventing that but now feel free to pause the video and find checkmate in three moves and i give you the hint this because of these moves this game became the immortal game okay while i enjoy my cup of tea okay okay i know everybody knows that so um let's do it together knight on g7 with check king on d8 and now this of course doesn't work anymore but it would work maybe on e7 the problem is this knight how to lure this knight from from this spot queen on f6 with tempo because it would check on the king and king can't move because all of the squares are controlled by white pieces so knight on f6 so queen is sacrificed one minor piece is sacrificed and two rooks are sacrificed and now we have bishop on e7 checkmate very beautiful and uh, and yeah three minor pieces are enough to checkmate the opponent and look at black they didn't lose even single piece that's amazing and, and yeah now i would like to show you how black could avoid um this checkmate there are two ways actually actually there is one way so instead of knight on a6 they actually could play bishop on a6 and what's the idea here the idea is this this king actually now can escape from the mating net but it's still losing the game because knight on c7 remember this sequence knight on c7 with check king on d8 and knight on a6 and still we have mating ideas here because a bishop can go on c7 and if the king goes to c8 
then we would have checkmate from d6. And if kings is moved to um, e8, the same. First knight attacks, and then after move, then we would have checkmate on f7. So black would have to do something about c7 or about um, f7. So how to achieve that? A queen on a2 with defending on f7. It also would not work because now bishop on c7, king on e8, and then knight on b4 attacking the queen. And if queen is moved from this diagonal, then is game over. And if queen is moved on this diagonal, like on e6, it's also game over. Now just queen on a8 uh, and whatever black play f6. Uh, white is winning and checkmating very soon, so it's impossible to play. This is why after knight on a6, bishop on b6 could be slightly better, but it's still winning for white. Queen on a8, and now queen c3, uh, defending from the checkmate, losing another piece, and then queen on c8, queen on c8, exchanging all pieces and now bishop on f8 with the threat of uh, taking on g7 and taking the rook so h6 would have to be played but now knight on d6 king d8 knight on f7 king e8 and now winning the exchange this way and then uh, after a couple more moves count the material uh, white has extra pawn uh, but white also can exchange um, this knight. This knight can move only on e7. So once it's exchanged, we would have bishop against um, the knight. But look at this. Extra pawn and all the pawns, almost all the pawns are on the light squares. So um, definitely winning for white. But this would be much more difficult. But let's jump to this position. Bishop on d6. This was the most interesting moment in the game. And actually Wilhelm Steinitz in 1879 uh, found this continuation. And Stockfish agree with that. That it would be the, the draw. Uh, or at least one of the sides, if made a little mistake, then would lose the game. Queen on a1, this is the move I told you about. Queen on a1, and now how to draw now? Uh, King e2 has to be played, and now don't take the rook on g1. Uh, white would have decisive attack. Only queen on b2 with attack on c2, so king on d2, and only now bishop on g1. Uh, and now we have e5, so cutting from g7 and setting up the mating net, and it's very, very similar situation, but there is a slight difference. This king is on d2 now, not on e2, and it's very, very important, and look why. You know already this continuation, bishop on a6, yeah? So it would be the similar, knight on c7, uh, king on d8, knight on a6, and now bishop on b6, it's very, very similar, but now queen on a8, it looks worse because now queen can come to c3 to go to uh, c8. But now it's much better move. Bishop on a5, bang, with attack on this king. This is why this was very important that king is on the dark square here. And now a king on e3 and uh, queen on c1. And if white for some reason start to go on the light squares like uh, e4 f3 then this queen can come to h1 and win the queen and win the game so that is not the option so white actually has to go on the dark squares and dark squares are controlled by this bishop and this queen so uh, as you see that would be the draw uh, you can you can find this continuation of uh, study of the game on the leeches link in the description so feel free uh, to continue but that's all i would like to show you this time the video is already too long so um, in this situation we have the first immortal game in the chess history so a uh, very beautiful enjoy the view for the moment and if you like this video press a like if for some reason you don't like this video press unlike leave the comments what games you would like to see in the future if you have some ideas to share i'm you know open to read all the comments i read all the comments and of course if you don't want to miss the future um, videos press subscribe 
press the bell button and uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.